Good morning, magandang umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, and it is build day 57. Yes, build day 57 on the construction schedule of the swimming pool in the backyard of Villa Feliz. Exciting morning if you live in this neck of the woods because there's that formation flying that I was telling you the other day. They're doing a lot of it this morning with some massive formations. Uh, I tried capturing some this morning. You might have seen that as we opened up today's episode. And if we get some good flyovers during the day, I'll try to capture that as well. Now today's gonna be sort of like a total recall, a deja vu kind of a, a morning, I think. Because remember yesterday when we opened up, we were planning on watching the guys do the painting of the bridge. And all I did was the base coat yesterday. The base coat of the, the boys in B701. I think today they will do the finishing coats on there. I think. We'll see. Anyway, let's go ahead and get today started. Now without further delay, let's get today's episode underway. Let's go ahead and take a look over here and see what Obing is doing. I see some paint that has some color, uh, specifically the green that's supposed to represent what the color of the palm, the palm trunk looks like. like this right here. Hey. See I'm doing some mixing up. Yeah, I like that color. And with the base coat done for the trunk of the tree, the next thing that needs to be done is the rings and the top of the, the top of the table, which is going to be the same color as the rings. And that's what's being mixed up over here right now. Okay, well, we're finally getting the, the mix of the maple. This is going to be the wood planks on the top of the bridge. It actually started out like this. You see this? It was green when he opened up this container and it said maple on the outside and it was green. I was shocked. I'm like, oh, that's not, that's like the color of a palm tree, the outside, not the brown. But what happens is the pigments are all in the bottom. And once you start stirring everything together, it went from this to this color right here. Now I want to show you this one they just opened up. This is supposed to be Chaco. This is the Chaco, but it's really, really, really dark right now. It should lighten up. I can see it has some like red, red pigment inside. And you can see right now it's starting to lighten up. And that's what's going to be used for the grain. The darker pigment will be the grain inside here, a little bit lighter, maple, and then a Chaco inside here. We'll see how that works. Now, I wish I had the original paint swatch, uh, the, all the different samples. Now, we have it on an earlier episode, so we'll have to do a comparison. We'll have to look and see what we ended up receiving and how close it is to the paint swatch that we used uh, for the selection of the colors. Uh, really, it's kind of hard to tell until you actually get it on the bridge. Now remember the whole concept of my design is supposed to be as natural as possible, as ma natural stones, uh, natural colors, very soft, blending in with that, that tropical, that lush tropical look and everything like that. I really wanted to avoid paint on this project, but uh, it seems like it's kind of difficult with the type of a bridge that we're building right here. And of course our little palm tree, our, our make-believe palm tree that we're using for a table and an umbrella stand. Well, I, I, it could be interesting what we're going to do here. And even though I didn't want to turn it into like a Disneyland kind of a, a look, I kind of have a feeling the bridge uh, might end up being a little cartoon, cartoon looking. Uh, but you know what? It might be okay for the for the kids, for the grandchildren when they come. Now, the bridge being like a cartoon kind of look, and hopefully it's not a cartoon look. I'm, I'm just making kind of a joke about that. But I think what we need to do, and many of you have made a comment, is when we have the children here, the kids, uh, the small ones, that we should have some type of a protection, like a rail or some type of a rope around the edge so that the kids can't fall off of the bridge. 
Let me tell you what I'm thinking about based upon a lot of your recommendations and upon some of my own concepts and designs. Now they're gonna come here in just a little bit once this paint dries up here and they're gonna use this little grinding pad, the grinding blade, and they're gonna clean up, they're gonna clean up this section. This is like the support rail that's supposed to be supporting the planks, our wood planks up here for the top of the bridge. And they're gonna soften, they're gonna round this off because we can't have any sharp edges for when you go underneath underneath the bridge. We don't want to bang our heads on this right here. We don't want to bang our heads even on round one, but because of the type of design that we have right here, you just have to be a little cautious knowing that you have a bridge, and I think most people will respect that. So the concerns that you all have had, many of you have had, about putting some type of a rail around the top, basically so that people don't fall over from side to side. Now most of the time, most of the time of the year, 99% of the year, it's just going to be Ness and myself here. And Nest will not go over the bridge at all. So 99, 100% of that 99% of the time is going to be me walking back and forth. And I'm not worried about me falling over. I, I know what my boundaries are and I'm not gonna have any issues. Unless we get into too many of those fun beverages uh, it, during one of our, our uh, relaxing evenings. Well, anyway, so what this is my concept based upon your recommendations and something that I come up with. I'm thinking about putting five hinges basically or five mounting brackets on the side of the rail one starting in the center right here one here one about halfway and then another one back here and basically it'll be a like a stainless steel uh, pad that goes across there with two bolt anchors that hold it in place and then we will put a and a little extension here that will have a piece of round pipe that goes out here and it will be situated such that it can be removed it will be removed it won't be permanent so the only thing that will be permanent in the bridge you'll see two anchors in here which you won't even notice that really uh, so what we can do when there are no children here uh, we don't need that we can remove this and that pipe that's going to be the little pipe holder well you will slide a stainless steel pipe in here and we'll put little eyelets in the top and we'll run rope between each of the five on both sides. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five. Just picture that inside your mind. Maybe I can draw up a picture later on to show you the concept. But it, it's not permanent and can be installed whenever we have children around. So while Oh Bing was doing the painting and doing all the mixing for more of the painting going on, we kind of looked over here at the at the stump, the stump for the palm. And although we still haven't got the bands in there yet, we he he already did the cappuccino on the top, and it was pure all cappuccino on the top. But here's a surprise. Uh, I said let's try something a little different. Let's make the bands on the inside, inside deep inside the trunk a little bit different with some uh, some design. So it kind of looks old and antiqued on the inside and the outside will be cleaner like where the, the branch is cut off. So this is kind of what we came up with right here. And this is a combination basically of three colors. Uh, this is the base color. There was a little bit of green inside there. And then he put the cappuccino on the top. Then we took a sponge with a little bit of the Chaco and kind of made some swirling actions on here. So if you kind of stand back from a distance it kind of looks a little bit like a little bit of an antiquing on the top. I mean, the good, the good thing about the good thing about paint is if you don't like it, you just paint right over it again. Uh, but we're going to try that because I wanted something to differentiate the top from the clean, the very clean bands that we're going to use around the edging here and here and here, which simulates the dropping off of the the plant leaves, uh, the branches that go off of it. So we're going to try this. We're going to see how it looks. Tell me what you think. So I just have to share something with you. This morning when the crew came, the foreman, Obeng, he said something to me. He said, uh, Sir James, he said, we have a surprise for you today. 
and I'm, I'm all about surprises. I like, well, good surprises. Uh, so I, I said, well, don't tell me. Let me see what the surprise is going to be. Well, anyway, I'm gonna talk about the surprise today. Now, our electrician just arrived, and he arrived with a big smile on his face. And, uh, well, let's go downstairs inside the basement so I can show you. It's easier to show than to tell. <laughs> So anyway, this is our electrician, Joel. Joel's doing all the electrical on all the lights, uh, hooking up the pump. He's the one that uh, worked with making sure that we had the right power coming out of the house that goes to our swimming pool. Now, originally, I asked, I asked the company when they were selecting lighting kits for our for our pool, I said, is there some way there, is there a remote, some way that we can control remotely the the colored lights, remember we have colored lights, uh, they're in a housing similar to this one right here, and uh, they said they, they have them out there, but there was no availability at the time. So we selected a different one right here, which it's kind of a manual one. I won't open the box up, uh, but to be able to change selections, and when I say manual, and selections, I mean changing the color of the lights and all the fancy features that these LED lights can do. You have to do it manually. Every time you flip the switch, it's like a light switch. Every time you turn the light switch, it changes a color, and it will go into a sequence, a sequence of changing colors. Very nice from slow, either fast, like a discotheque, or very slow for very calming. Now, they weren't able to get the, the ones with the remote control, and that one was okay. But the surprise today is what Joel delivered here today, and there are these lights right here, and look in his hand. He has a remote control, and the remote can control could do things like changing colors, as he's doing, he's controlling the colors. And it's all, how many colors is it, Joel? Seven, sir? Seven, seven different, seven different colors inside. And white. And white. And, and also, uh, this is the sequence that we were talking about. This is like the discotheque stuff. We probably won't be doing too much disco stuff inside the swimming pool, but what I wanted was the one that slowly goes, changes color for ambience. Okay, so this one, you can see by itself, it is changing to each one of the different colors inside, inside the swimming pool. So this will really look great underneath the water. I'm excited to see this in action once we get the pool done and we can have the pool full of water we'll check it out all right here we are back after lunch now what Obang is working on right now I think just to kind of get an idea since we still have a lot of the rest of the 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 bridge that still is yet to be painted he's going and doing the detailing of those little sections the little cutouts that look like grain inside the wood for the wood planks it looks something like this So that should give a little bit more of a realistic look of what wood planks should look like. Uh, so we'll continue to monitor them. We'll do some time lapse and watch this complete it out. So one of our subscribers asked yesterday in yesterday's episode, I believe it was the latest episode, what does it look like underneath the bridge? Well, it looks just like anything else. It's going to have a regular finish. You're not going to leave anything rough. There's no spots you will see anywhere in any of the construction that are left in a rough condition. Everything is nice and finished. This will be painted with, right now they're doing the boys and uh, B701 for the base coat. You can see we have the whole openings with the wires. Like I explained the other day, there's two of them, one here, one there for the lights. That will be downward shooting of the lights. And then uh, the color that's going go on here is a color that looks a little bit like a dark platinum kind of a color, which will be something similar to make it look like, make it look like maybe a little bit of ironworks, but on here it is going to be According to Obang, there's going to be some kind of design where it's actually kind of sculptured or something that gives it something, an interesting look. And I've seen everything he's done so far, 
So I trust his judgment on this. We're going to follow and see what it looks like when he does the bottom of the bridge. The concrete is uh, become a real wood. Ah, okay. So if you didn't catch that, he said the concrete will become the real wood. So it'll have some kind of a wood, wood grain kind of effect on there. It's really getting towards the end of the day, so it's time to do an end of day wrap up. And I can't believe the sun as bright as it is. It's kind of poking me in the eyes over here. We've had a lot of clouds today, and I was really concerned that with all this rain and all this paint, I thought it might be a catastrophe. Although we had a little bit, I won't call it a catastrophe. Uh, remember, I always talk about the good, bad, and the ugly. And I'm gonna show you a little, a little problem that we had, uh, but nothing we can't overcome. So let's go ahead and go down inside the pool and look at the things that was accomplished today. All right, well, we're going to do the good, bad, and the ugly. And we're going to do the bad and the ugly first. <laughs> we're going to get the, the bad and ugly out, and then we'll go to all the good stuff. Anyway, this this is the bad and the ugly. We had a problem here. I think what happened was uh, there was some tape that was put on here. And when tape was put on, a lot of this paint had not cured yet. And upon peeling off some of the paint, it also peeled off some of the paint. So not a, not a big deal. They'll go ahead and do the corrective action on here. And we'll repaint it. Like I said earlier, paint is paint. Paint, you can always repaint. And that's what we'll do with this area right here. Uh, let's go to the good. The good is a lot of the bridge uh, is, is uh, done, but not all of it. We're still doing a lot of detailing. Especially the details here haven't been done, like this over here. Each one of the little bolt segments still have to be done as well. They did the base coat underneath, you saw that today. And uh, I, I think maybe tomorrow, once this uh, the 701, the B701 is all dried, uh, maybe they'll do the actual finish coat on there. Again, the finish coat is actually it's going to look very similar to, oh, kind of like, uh, maybe this, maybe more like this color right here. Uh, so it will give, it will blend, blend in very well with the color of the footer support for the base of the bridge. Uh, down, down in the pool, I didn't see this until just now. They're in the process of working on the drain. They'll be, they'll be installing the drain very soon, and I'll be glad to see that once they get that and they get the little pipe cut and everything like it's supposed to be. And this will, this will be completed. Also, Mr. Ardal over here, he has been doing all of the filling of all the Ardal here today, all the concrete. We'll get, we're going to call it cement and grout. Uh, that's what's doing the nice, making it even more flat. Flat, we'll say flatter. Uh, he worked on all of this today, looking very nice on the sidewalk area around the swimming pool. Now our electrician, Joel, not only just delivered some lights today, he pulled, they did, they pulled all the cables. These are the main cables that are going from the house over to the pump. And they pulled all the wires through and he's working, working right now still, inside doing all the wiring for the individual switches, all the circuit breakers, everything inside the back of the pump house. 
I think that's about it for today. Uh, I th I'm, I'm predicting now, I'm making a second prediction. I'm predicting that we'll have water in the pool ready to test everything out by Saturday. I, th I think that's what, I think that what everybody's kind of agreeing on. I think Saturday is the day. We're just kind of doing the final, all the little final things to get everything working. Saturday, I'm, I'm sticking to it. Uh, so anyway, I wanted to do one more thing. I wanted to thank all the people that have been hanging hanging in with this pool build along with us because this is almost two months and we have like the same group of people uh, The same group every single day that we upload a video You can see from the view count on there and it seems to be very consistent Which means you guys are hanging in watching everything just along with us when we're watching everything getting done here as well So thank you very much for supporting us on the channel. Well, it's time to close if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up, please share, and if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PR Dream heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You'll be subscribed and notified the next time I upload a new video. So until such time from right here in the Philippines, you have a wonderful and blessed day. <laughs>